Are we ready? What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing today, ladies? I'm so excited! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, man, it is, whew. This, this is going to be a nerve wracking, but we're going to have some fun with this one. <laughs> I promise you we're going to have some fun. So we have an absolute huge, huge guest with us today. Um, I knew it was huge, but uh, I didn't realize how, how huge he was because uh, once we pushed the promo for this, man, I got so many me messages and DMs and all kind of other stuff about telling them about how he was the reason why they started listening to country music and, and just I got so many stories. So at that point, I was like, man, this guy is huge, huge. And, you, and my son said, if you say the same word twice, that means it's legit. Like, so, <laughs> and big shout out to Judd Ansey. I want to give Judd a, 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 a shout out because he, he I, I knew of Garth's music, but I didn't know Garth. And he referred me to his Netflix show, The, uh, the Road I'm On. Yes. And I really got a chance to really get to know Garth as a person. And, and I just kind of spoiled it for you, uh, Julie. My bad. You're supposed to be the one introducing him. But, um, <laughs> okay. So, so I was a fan before, but but after watching that, now I'm, I'm a fan fan. So uh, without further ado, Julie, uh, please introduce today's guest. So y'all, we have a legend with us today. He has received every accolade the recording industry can bestow on an artist. He is the top selling solo artist in US history with more than 157 million albums sold. And I think Leah and I have a few of those in our collection. <laughs> he, has sure. friend, he has some friends in low places and we are thrilled he's counting us among his friends today. He's here with us today to boost morale for the military community and discuss his new music. Please give a big chief chat welcome to Garth Brooks. Hey. Boost morale. What kind of morale do you guys need boosting? You're the coolest people on the planet, man. <laughs> Garth, thanks so much for taking time out to join us. We appreciate it. And we know that the military military community does too. For everybody watching, just a little bit of housekeeping, drop a note in the comments, let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you have any questions or comments for Garth, we'll be reading those a little bit live throughout the broadcast. Now's a good time to start your watch party to enjoy this great interview with your friends. And if you're not following us, you should because we have other wonderful guests just like Garth lined up all season long and into 2021. Oh man, Garth freaking Brooks. <laughs> 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 Wow, man, we are super, super excited to have you join us today. Uh, it's amazing that you're able to connect with, with us and, and boost morale. Like, we, we need morale, too. Uh, and, and like I said, your music has, has inspired a, a many, many generations. So uh, thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time today. And can you let us know where are you joining us from today? Yeah, and first of all, it's my honor uh, to join and uh, talk about boosting morale. You guys are the reason why we get to do what we do. I mean, you're the reason why I sleep good. You're the reason why I get to chase music. You're the reason why my three daughters can believe they can become anybody that they choose to do. So thank you for that gift. I'm uh, coming to you from Nashville, uh, Twang Town, the home of country <laughs> music. Oh, yeah. This is, a, this is a great place. We're always here in the... Uh, we're, we're in our house uh, in me and Miss Sherwood's house. Well, Miss Sherwood's house. I'm in that. <laughs> and, uh, she's gone today. She's traveling. Uh, she'll be back uh, tomorrow. And so uh, on those kind of days, all I do is kind of dive into my music business stuff because when we're together, we're trying to spend as much time as we can. And so today I've been just doing a lot of the uh, the part that's not that fun. Kind of, It's not the playing or the writing or anything. It's more dealing with... Uh, uh, those guys in the suits that I've been lucky enough to work with since day one. So they kind of make it a family kind of thing. So uh, even on my worst day beats a beats the best day working for a living ever. So, uh, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so how have you been during the pandemic? How have y'all been faring and how has the new normal affected you and your ability to interact with your fans? Well, well I don't know about you guys as family, but uh, kind of addressing the guys right now, but the, for here, Miss Sherwood, the, the the queen of the household, kind of dictate all the rules. And she's the one that's a stickler. You know, take your masks and, and make sure you got plenty in the car. So in case you're running from the farm to a hardware store or something, you've got one in your truck. And and so she kind of does it, a lot of the washing hands and a lot of doing, hey, instead of riding, going riding with somebody, how about you Zoom? 
right with them and stuff. So farms have been kind of shut down, to tell you the truth. And it's been shut down all summer, which means that to-do list that we had on the farm garage for the next five years, that, that got completed the first month, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there is nothing left to do on this farm. It has already been done 10 times. So I'm sure everybody's house is kind of that way. Sure. That's so wonderful. And Garth, we know you love our nation's military. We have soldiers, yeah. airmen, sailors, Marines, Coast Guard members, and even Space Force personnel watching live from all over the world. In fact, we have U.S. Navy retiree Earl Stegmeyer, who is watching with us. He's seen you live 29 times, <laughs> and it would have been 30 if not for COVID. So 2020 has been a bit of a tough year. Any words of encouragement to share with Earl and with our nation's heroes? Yeah, man, I, I don't know how much you guys' world has changed. When I think about it, you guys always handle the jobs nobody else wants. Right. So I think your job probably just continues to be that job that thank God somebody wants to do that and you're called to do it. My dad was, my brothers were, uh, I wasn't, I was called to do music. And there's a sense of guilt in that in me, and but a sense of love and appreciation for those people who were called. I got brothers um, that were teachers. That's a calling that I wouldn't want. Uh, I got brothers that's in law enforcement. That's a calling I wouldn't want either. So I uh, just uh, can't tell you guys around the world how much I love you, how much um, if there's anything that I have to do with like music or something that kind of maybe gets one of you through a day, then that's my medal of honor right there. And I, I can't imagine a, a better award that they can bestow on an artist than that right there. Awesome. So um, we got a chance to brag on you a little bit in the in the introduction. Uh, I'm going to brag on you a little bit more. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So you are the first to make it on the Billboard's Hot Country chart in each of the last five decades. Now, I know what you're going to tell me. That, that just means you're old, but <laughs> I, can see, I can see it, I can see it in your face. You know, oh, man, that, I, I got lucky because we entered in November of 1989 and entered in February of 2020. So oh, man, look at that. Day, I just got under the line on both of them. So that's, that's awesome. Awesome. So he said um, so don't call him old. No, no, he listen, he looks way younger than 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 me, definitely. So uh, right. but but also, you know, having that success, it kind of takes discipline and mental fortitude. And so for the military, it's critical for our troops to be mission ready, the the the, the mental fortitude and the resiliency piece. How do you stay motivated to see you even when life gets a little rough? Well, you know, man, it's 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 kind of odd. You pick this up really quick. You can go to Walter Reed and hang out there and all those guys want to do. Now, these guys, you know, when they're calling a guy, his nickname's Paper Cut because he's only missing one foot, you know? Yeah. When they can talk about that at that level. And all when you say, what do you want to do? All of them say the same thing. I want to get back to my unit. I got to get back to my guys. I think that's how you do it is you surround yourself with people that you've been with from the start. So let's start with Bob Doyle. I met him in 1987 when I moved here. I met him the third day I was here. Um, he's a lieutenant colonel retired uh, in the Air Force and um, just, uh, well, no, not a lieutenant colonel. He's a colonel in the Air Force uh, retired. And so he, uh, we've been together since day one. So there's part of your team. Uh, Rusty Jones, the lawyer, Kerry O'Neill, and Cheryl, the, the accountants, Craig. We've all been together since day one. The guy managing the tour out there that's putting it all on was a friend of mine in college. The guitar player is a college roommate. Uh, I think we have most of our people, the majority of people are 30 years in. And so I think that's how you stay tuned in is because you've got guys that knew you before this. So they're going to call you out when you start getting out of bounds and stuff. Oh, and yeah. doing with the most loving hands, they're just trying to pull you back on your own track that they know that you have set for yourself. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, like I kind of talked to it at the beginning, man, I, I looked at your, uh, your doc kind of documentary on Netflix, right? It was awesome to be honest Thanks. with you. Um, and so I know you don't take for granted the people that you inspire. Um, I can just remember uh, you you had some issues in Ireland with trying to get some shows going and you, with, with the government over there, and you were willing to do anything to give those hundreds of thousands of people an opportunity to, to, to hear your music or have a good time or put a smile on their face. And so um, so I know how much you love, and you don't even like the term fans, right? You, you call them angels. <laughs> we call them friends, angels. Thank God for them because, you know, football can play to an empty stadium. Yeah. Try as a try as an artist to do that. It just doesn't work. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
for me, you know, I'm in a unique position. I get a chance to, to, to have a conversation with you. And so I want to bring some military angels on to exactly. introduce themselves uh, live on air and, and, and tell you kind of how you inspire them or, or, or why, they, why they love you so much. So um, these, these service members are currently stationed at Cannon Air Force Base in New Mexico. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, Technical Sergeant uh, Webkin. Tech Sergeant Webkin, can you come on? The hey, sir, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I sure can. Hear. Hey, sir, uh, my name is Technical Sergeant Webkin. Uh, I've been here at Cannon for about a year and a half. Uh, kind of been all over the world, but uh, had the opportunity. Our chief sent down an email saying, hey, who wants to, who wants to talk to Garth Brooks? I raised my hand first. I said, you know me, I, I went through all high school, every deployment last 17 years. Your, play, your song is at the top of my playlist the whole time. So I just want to say thanks for, thanks for making the music and uh, keeping us going. Hey, man, that's, that's, that's my honor. If I, again, if I get to play one little small little part in the humongous role that you do as an individual and as a group, then uh, I feel that I'm using the gift that God put me down here to do, man. So thank you. It's very sweet. So up, up next, we got uh, Sergeant Vazona. Hello, Garth Brooks. My name How is Sergeant Vazona. And How are you? Um, I am doing well. I'm so nervous. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm from uh, San Diego, California originally. And um, I didn't start listening to country music until I moved to Minot, North Dakota, where there was only one country station and I fell in love with country music. And so I'm a, I'm a fan, I'm a huge fan, so. Very much. Thank you. Very sweet. I, we played Aww. San Diego before you were born, a place called the Baca. <laughs> but it was a little basement kind of place. And then the Minot, uh, you know, the state fairs in Minot. So it's a, uh, it's fun. And, and even though it's in the summer, it's still kind of cool <laughs> up there, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Uh, so I, I've had a lot of fun with that. And I went through there first with Reba and uh, she kind of showed you the ropes and you just, with Reba, it's entertaining one-on-one. -on -one, so you just take your notepad and you take all kinds of notes and watch her the whole time. Because if some point you're going to get that turn, that shift, then that's who you're competing with. You want to outdo Reba. Mm -hmm. It can't be done, but that's still a goal. You know? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Uh, up next, we got senior Airman Hartzell. Hello, Mr. Brooks. Uh, Airman Hartzell here. How you doing? Doing well, sir. How you doing? I am doing better than I deserve. Thank you for asking. <laughs> yes, sir. I was. Uh, I'm. I'm born. I was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I know oh, you're. Uh, I know you're an Oklahoma person yourself, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I lived in Grove, Oklahoma, for many, many years, and uh, I my my parents introduced me to your music, and I've listened to you ever since, sir. You, you're the reason I got into country music. I'm not. I can't even lie about that. You're very sweet. I said, uh, born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, raised in Yukon, Oklahoma. So you, you know where both those places are for sure. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I've never, I've never got to meet anybody from Grove. I always heard about Grove, but never. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is civilization in Grove. There is. <laughs> so uh, up next, we got Emory First Class Bigler. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am great. Where are you? Where are you at today? I am at my house uh, at Cannon Air Force Base right now. Very I'm good. actually from Greenville, Tennessee, which is a small town. It's about 45 minutes from Knoxville. Oh yes, ma'am. We know where Greenville is. I've been at Cannon for about a year and a half now. This is my first duty station, and I started listening to your music just as soon as I started growing up in Tennessee. You know, we all listen to country music. And my five-month-old daughter actually falls asleep to your music, so that helps calm her down. That's very sweet. What is your baby's name? Her name's Grace. And is this your first one? Yeah, she's my first. World's great, isn't it? Yes. Aww. I mean, the greatest invention God ever made, for sure. And the only thing better than one, honey, is 50. Have as many as you can afford there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, up next, we have Emory First Class Brown. We had Hi, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I love your smile. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're just in trouble. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, hi, I'm A1C Brown. I'm from Florida. Um, I've been a huge fan since I was younger. Uh, my mother would play a huge variety of music, and you were definitely in the right. rotation. You still got and your it's mom. A pleasure. I'm sorry? 
You still got your mama? Yes. What's her name? Uh, her name's Jada. You tell Jada I said I love her, okay? You give her a hug mm -hmm. for me. All right, I will. Awesome, awesome. I just want to say her smile is infectious, and her, her <laughs> energy and her joy is just so infectious. <laughs> It is. And it's funny. Man. My, mom, my mom was the one that turned me on to so many great musics. You know, the, the core of my belief lies in Haggard, Jones, Buck Owens, Pride, those guys. But my mom was feeding me since I was a young kid, Mahalia Jackson. And she was feeding me Aretha Franklin and Sam Cooke and all these musics that my brother Jerry kind of amplified for me, which brought it even closer to me. And so with Betsy being uh, more of the folk rock that Janice uh, Joplin's uh, the free, those kind of things. And then my other brothers being more like the James Taylors, the Eagles, uh, Seeger, all that stuff kind of funneled all right down into me. And uh, it was, uh, so that's all good stuff. So I know your mom, her influence on you is music. That's how it was in our family. Definitely. <laughs> awesome, awesome, man. And up last, but definitely definitely not least, Airman <laughs> Boreen. Where you at, Airman Boreen? Here, sir. Good afternoon, Garth Brooks. It's so great to talk to you. Good afternoon. Um, why, do, you why do I feel you are in charge? Why do I feel that? <laughs> she definitely knows the most. I would tell you that the, the, the youngest airmen know how to do the stuff. Like, don't ask me to do anything. I've been in too long. <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you. It's an absolute honor. Um, I am Airman Madeline Boreen. I'm from Spotsylvania, Virginia. And my mom also got me into your music. Um, we had a pretty rocky relationship. I gave her hell going through my teenage years. And uh, we had our best and worst memories in the car because that was her place to lecture me since she had a captive audience. But she would also play her favorite CD from her favorite country artist, The Garth Brooks. And let me tell you, it gave her so much joy hearing me sing along to it because uh, she has a great appreciation for people that have that musical talent, mostly because she's envious of them. So ah, it sweet. helped uh, bridge the gap between my mom and I. Good for you. Now, Miss Mandolin, do you still have your mama? Yes, sir. What is her name? Natalie. And Miss Mandolin, hey, do you have children yet? No, sir. Well, trust me on this one. God has a wicked sense of humor, okay? And what he's going to do is he's going to give you a baby just like you were. Uh, and, you, and that baby will go round and round just like your mom. And then you'll, you'll find out the same thing we do. Children are the greatest joy and the greatest heartache that you'll ever experience. But the gift you give us as parents, it's the greatest gift. It's what makes life down here feel like, okay, it, it's worth no matter how rough it gets. It's always worth it if your babies are happy. Thank you, sir. Hello, your mama. Awesome, awesome. Chief, did we get everyone? We got everybody. Awesome. Garth, we thank you so much for that. Good deal. So, Garth, um, let's talk about your music. You have two new albums coming out this month. Both of these will be available in select exchanges. Can you tell us about Fun and Triple Live Deluxe? And what is it like releasing music during a pandemic? <laughs> That's the thing. I think the music. It wasn't released during the pandemic. It get been put off and put off because it's uh, you guys will totally get this. How do you have fun and celebrate when everyone else is suffering and hurting and trying to get through this thing? And then it goes so long that maybe the question then turns to, hey, in all the suffering and all the seriousness, can we have a little fun? Can we just bring a little bit of the healing in? So that's why it's waited this long to the very end. And, you know, there's that great line uh, in that music movie. Um, trying to think a spinal tap where so there's a fly there's a fine line between clever and stupid i don't know how smart it is to release two albums on the same day but uh, <laughs> i gotta tell you what i love about it is it brings the studio feel and it brings the live feel together so what you get is the new music and the old music kind of put together and that's kind of been our whole thing since we came back out of retirement and started touring again is trying to marry the new music and the old music and and we're lucky garth brooks is very lucky because the friends or the angels that that support us have always treated the new music like the old music and the old music like the new music. So it's a it's um it's it's a sweet position to get to be in. So it just makes sense that these two are coming out on the same day. 
Wow, exciting. And you and your wife, Trisha Yearwood, are taking on a modern classic with your co cover of Shallow, which is featured on Fun. How did you decide to cover this? And then what's the reaction been like so far? Well, first of all, it came, you know, we do these Facebook lives since we weren't doing stadium shows anymore. And people- I know. love your setup, by the way. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's fun. And you talked with Samantha, I'm sure her and hashtag or Brian. He's a, we got like eight Brian's on tour. So everybody gets a nickname if you're Brian. So her and hashtag <laughs> set this up. And uh, what I love about it is they start the, someone says, Hey, can you do shallow? Well, I know, uh, you know, I, I never thought that that me and Bradley Cooper looked a lot alike, but I, <laughs> I know that Miss Yearwood and Lady Gaga, both are maybe two of the greatest female singers uh, of the modern era. And so it was like, yeah, let's turn her loose on it. So even though we call it a duet, I'm a smart man, she tears it up. And so the reaction has been amazing. They said, when you put it on the record, uh, <clears throat> we got asked so much. I said, yeah, we'll try it for the record, knowing it would never make the record. But after hearing Miss Yearwood do what she does with this song, it'd be a crime not to have it out and uh, show this world what she can do once she reaches second or third gear. I'm telling you, I'm so glad she's not here because she wouldn't even talk to me if she was here. But if, <laughs> I, I would love for her to sit in this seat and talk to uh, the military branches as well, because she's huge supporter and a huge respect that way. And, and you would absolutely worship her. Bring her on. She can come back, right? Yeah, we definitely, we definitely have her on now. Our people yeah. will get in touch with your people. We'll make that happen. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So again, I get to brag on you some more, Garth. So uh, you just took home the Icon Award uh, for the 2020 Bill, Bill, Billboard Music Award. And that's not an old award either. That, that, is, that means that you have inspired so many throughout your entire career. Uh, what does that accolade mean to you? Well, I, I love the fact they gave it to a country artist. That was cool. Um, because there's so much of the listening audience out there that's country music based. I mean, we just saw two examples here with their moms, you know, talking about how they were raised on, on that music. So I think the country music reaches a lot of people. And I think it's the voice of the everyday kind of uh, person, uh, like my mom and my dad were and our family were. So um, I thought it was cool. It was very sweet that they would honor a country artist like that. And as long as it's under the flag of country music, I can brag about it all day. When it, when it gets down to Garth Brooks, I'm probably going to uh, shut off because I, I can tell you when we received that award, there was six guys on stage, including myself. Five of those six are the original members that started. The rookie came in 93 or 94. So he's He's 25, 26, but we still call him the rookie because he's, <laughs> he's been there the shortest amount of time. So it's uh, it's it's fun to get to play with those guys. And any award that comes to, say, Garth Brooks, truthfully, it belongs to everybody that is Garth Brooks. And it's it's quite a lot of people, and we've all been kind of together since the start. Awesome. Want to pause for a second. You're getting an incredible reception on our live feed. So just want to share some comments with you from the military viewers from around the world. Lots of people excited about the music release and about you being on Cheap Chat. Lots of people saying thank you for doing this. Says, I can't wait for Friday. And Jennifer says, Shallow is amazing with four exclamation points. <laughs> <Have a girl. laughs> Chris Ward says, were you surprised that one line from a song could bring so much attention to Chris Ledoux and what did it mean to you have to have that kind of impact on his career? Yeah, man, that's, that's kind of the crazy thing. And you guys will be able to put this in your own life and show it. When people go, hey man, thank you for what you do for me. I always find that I get more out of it. I mean, let's talk about parenting. Uh, your kids will someday, you might be gone by then, but they'll someday realize how much you have done for them as a parent. But the truth is, if you're a parent, you realize, oh my God, this is all for me. It's so selfish. It's such a great thing. Same way when you stand on that stage, you get people bring signs that go, you know, thank you for this or thank you for that. But the truth is, it's me saying thank you for my life. So when I mentioned Chris Ledoux, that totally worked in my favor because it made people feel like I knew what I was talking about, one. And it made me people that know Chris Ledoux all of a sudden go, I love Chris Ledoux. So this guy must be like him. There's the, that's the mistake they made. But you talk about the greatest compliment in the world you can receive. If somebody thinks you are the man that Chris Ledoux is, that's a, uh, that dude was one hell of a guy and he's, he's a hero 
He's one of those John Wayne characters that will never not be John Wayne. He just, it was him, larger in life, uh, lived what he said and walked the walk. He's an example for all of us, men and women alike, to uh, kind of see the goal, stick to it, no matter how hard the storm may blow, you keep the same path. And I just, I, I love him and forever will love him. Awesome. So Garth, before we wrap up, where can our viewers go to keep up with you and where can we find fun and triple live deluxe? Well, the regular thing on you know, garthbrooks.com, you can always keep up with us there, uh, even though even we are kind of behind on garthbrooks.com. So Inside Studio G every Monday night, uh, we do that to kind of keep up. And the truth is what you're going to learn there is the future because these people bring us unbelievable ideas and we go, oh yeah, we were thinking about that. <laughs> and so it's fun. And then as far as the music, um, you can always get it at uh, like Amazon, you can get it anywhere that records are sold. So we're talking Target, Walmart. Um, what we love about this is it's actually coming to the military bases. So it'll be right there. And I think for the first time in a long time, our new stuff will be there like it was in the old days. When, when we retired, we got away from record labels. So we became our own label. And so now we're just now getting back into places where you used to be able to find the music. Now you can find them uh, there now because we're just growing as a, we're an independent record label. At the same time, um, the people are, are treating us like a major and then, and, and, and oh, yeah. results. So it's very sweet. Well, no, you're def definitely a major because uh, if you can pack out Central Park uh, with a million people, I, I don't think you need a record label. <laughs> I, know, I, think, I think you're pretty good. <laughs> that was that was fun, man. And the fun just continues, you know, just uh, when the stadiums were on, you get to Denver and, and, and you set the record there, which is great because the NFL doesn't like it when you set the record in their own stadium. But yeah. <laughs> their problem, which they should learn, they don't listen to me. They only put 22 people on the field. Hell, we put 10,000 on the field. <laughs> That yeah. makes it <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a blast. Awesome. Hey, awesome. Chief, so, yes. I just want to share. There's one more comment that just came in. Um, and I know we're getting close on time, but this, this is good. She says, Casey Arnold, she says as a veteran and a nurse practitioner, thank you in all caps for giving me some sunshine today. Uh, so sweet. You guys give me sunshine every day and I can't tell you how much I, I, I don't say this lightly, and you guys need to understand it if you don't. Coming from a guy that's old enough to be your dad, I'm telling you right now, I go to sleep because you're out there. I do. I dream because you're out there. And then the greatest thing is I get to act on that dream because you're out there. I love you very, very much. Worship you past, present, and future. You have all my respect and all my gratitude. Oh, man. See, you can drop the microphone. <laughs> My goodness. That's a wrap. <laughs> I love you guys. I'll see y'all. Awesome. So uh, it's been a true honor for you to have us with us today. Uh, this just means so much to our service members all around the world. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Awesome. All right. Bye, guys. Chief, Chief Bye. chat out. Chief chat out. <laughs>